this application I've just uh, I've just mentioned to you filed in uh, 2016. In 2016, our lawyers, should I say our attorneys in Europe, approached the ICC to make or to present a very compelling case about the human rights abuses being perpetrated by the Nigerian government against the people of Biafra. As you well know, Goran did a very wonderful work. That was in 2016. Also in 2017, additional work was done by our lawyers here in the United States of America. In 2018, additional work was done by our lawyers back home. In 2019, we hired one of the top human rights lawyers in the world to litigate this very matter before the ICC against the Nigerian government. In that same 2019, and as you said, for the, I believe for the very first time, I'm providing clarity on this very matter. I went to the ICC myself. I went to ICC myself. I was deposed. I told them exactly what was happening. They said we shouldn't discuss it when we go outside, and we've been waiting since 2019, we're in 2021. And instead of doing something about the, should I say, the very relentless pursuit of the African people, the Nigerian government has been emboldened, the zoo has been emboldened into killing our people, not just killing us, we have now arrived at a situation where our women are being abducted and raped in the north because ICC failed to do something for how many years now? 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. We hired people in the Hague on a permanent basis, paying them tons of money to be collecting all this evidence against the Nigerian government for the sole purpose of bringing this matter before the ICC, at least for them to investigate. But due to the overwhelming political pressure on them, they have not been able to do anything about it. The only reason why they issued some kind of um, statement a few weeks ago, or should I say a couple of months ago, was because of the NSAS protest. If not, they wouldn't have mentioned it. I am in the United States of America, where we've hired a very top lobbying firm at Washington, D.C., at huge expense, I must tell you. You also know about the submissions we made to the United Nations and Jenna Kalama's report. Everyone has read it. We went there, IPOB, she mentioned IPOB and Biafra. You can see that report on human rights abuses in the zoo. I have been to Geneva. I sat down with United Nations officials in Geneva. I have been to the EU. Most of them have been to the House of Lords to make a presentation before Baroness Cox. I have been to Capitol Hill here in the United States of America in Washington to present our case. So where else do you want us to, case, to take our cases to before something is done about it? These are the things that people don't understand. Most Thank of the contracts, most of the work we are doing, you cannot see them. You cannot write about them or talk about them. If not for this very program, I won't be discussing this. But it's about time our people realize that we are doing all we can to present all this catalog of abuse and degradation before the conscience of the international community. But unfortunately, Britain is working for Nigeria. There is a, what's what I call a climate of neocolonialism still prevalent in Nigeria. And they still see Nigeria as a contraption they created. They still see Nigeria as a place they can come to Biafra and take our oil and gas without paying for it. Therefore, anything that can sustain the false unity of Nigeria is what they are going to encourage. They see Biafra agitation as an antithesis to that very plan which they have, which is to keep this contraption together for them to have unfettered and unrestricted access to our resources. And that's what's been happening. 
but unfortunately our people are not um, are intelligent enough to understand it. Every year we spend money. We have somebody in the Hague right now collecting all the evidence, the red cases, everything, all the murders, all the unprovoked attacks and victims, everything. But for ICC to call up that very case is another problem. When I say that Biafra is going to be the last miracle on earth, people don't quite understand what I mean by that. Biafrans don't know the number of people and forces against them. They don't understand it. Those of us at the co face of this struggle, deep inside it, we know who our enemies are, and they are numerous. But I am very, very confident of victory because the God we serve is the one that made this very universe, and his words must prevail. And on that very promise, we anchor our hope, we rest all that we are doing to restore Biafra. And we know that in the end that Biafra will come. We have a lot of enemies, you know. We've not done anything to them. It's Biafra that built America. We built this very country that I'm in today. Biafra has built the United States of America. The majority of all the hard-working free men and women they took from the western coast of Africa, they shipped them to the USA. They are the ones that made this country great. So they see something in us that we cannot see. They know we are very productive. They know we are hardworking. But above all, Britain knows that we are blessed. It is that blessing from God that Britain doesn't want to see rise up in Africa. And that is why they are using very primitive felony people to try to suppress us. You saw yesterday that Britain, BBC was advertising army positions. I see you even telling you what you can get the forms to join the Nigerian army. And I know that BBC functions on, on tax or should I say license fee pay as money in the UK. They don't accept any advert. So how come BBC Pigeon in Nigeria is advertising for people to join the army of Nigeria for free? Because they are, of course, agents of neocolonialism. They are working for Britain. They want Nigerian army ranks to swell up so they can suppress any measure of uprising against the very decaying, crumbling, dynamo zoologic, so as well as zoological republic. What our people need to realize is this. What we go through on a daily basis to ensure that our cases are heard all over the world is immense. Everywhere. Especially here in the USA. But if the world continues to turn a blind eye and they continue to kill, to rape, to murder, to slaughter people, to take our land. They expect us to put our hands and do nothing. The answer is no, of course, we must fight. Because we have our backs now against the wall, and that's what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ohamadike, one of Biafra.